Our story is the wondrous Whirligig, the Wright Brothers' first flying machine. Preacher. Sometimes he surprised us with a gift he'd Papa turned one pro- Papa was a traveling preacher. Sometimes he surprised us with a gift he'd purchased in a distant city, a picture book, or a puzzle wrapped in brown paper. But one particular morning, when I was seven years old, Papa came home with a special present. Look what I brought you boys, he said. A wondrous whirligig. Papa turned one propeller around and around until the elastic band was tightly twisted into knots. Behold, he said, and spread his hands wide. The spinning whirligig gyrated, zigzagging dangerously above lace doilies in our dark parlor. It bumped the ceiling, flip-flopped, and dropped to the carpet. Kerplunk, said Kate. Extraordinary, said Willie. Truly. It's called a helicopter, said Papa. It was invented by a Frenchman named Mr. Penu. It flies like a blind bat, I said. An excellent name for it, said Mother. And an excellent reason to fly Mr. Penu's bat outdoors, said Papa. Outdoors, the bat spun in loopy swirls. The elastic unwound, and the bat swooped, flip-flopped, and crashed. Peculiar, said Willie. I suggested tying a toy soldier near the bottom propeller to balance the bat. We attached some bent wire with wooden spools for wheels, so the bat stood up all by itself. Mother and little Kate came to see. The bat gyrated in tight circles. It plummeted suddenly. We held our breath but it bounced neatly on its springing wheels. Whew! I believe you boys have tamed the bat, said Mother proudly. Why don't we build a big bat and fly it right over Cedar Rapids, I shouted. Why not indeed, said Willie. Because, Papa rumbled in his deepest preacher's voice, if the good Lord had intended folks to fly... Folks would have wings like angels instead of feet like folks. But no idea was ever too far-fetched for Mother. Let's settle down to the kitchen table, sharpen some pencils, and puzzle it out, she said. Papa shrugged his shoulders. Well, my dear, he said, I suppose the good Lord sometimes changes his mind. Wilbur drew the bat, but bigger. Probably it won't be so different from building a chair like the one we made out of broomsticks, I said. Do we still have those drawings? asked Willie. Right here, I said. Little Kate's old pram wheels would fit too, I bet. Excellent idea, Orv, said Willie, spreading out another piece of brown paper. Make sure to leave plenty of room for the bottom propeller. Precisely. Mother drew a long double curve between the propellers. I'm sure we can find such a handle long enough for two strong boys to crank together. Muscle power, we shouted. Propellers were a real predicament. You know, said Willie, old windmills were made of stretched fabric, just like twirling propeller kites. We already knew how to build kites. We had plenty of kite drawings. Finally, the working drawings of the big bat looked like a genuine boy-powered flying machine. An admirable apparatus, said Wilbur. By the next day, word spread that we were building a flying machine. Kids climbed the fence for a better look. Some left and came back later with little brothers and sisters and visiting cousins. Lauren and Rooch came home hungry and impatient as usual to wash up and get right to the soup. We are building a whirligig flying machine, Willie announced proudly. You don't say so, Rooch replied solemnly, looking the big bat over carefully. You know, Rooch, said Lauren, some fellows have little baby brothers. And what do you suppose we have, Lauren? asked Rooch. <laughs> little brainy brothers, they laughed. That was their favorite joke. Yes, sirree, Bob said Lauren. Don't you boys fly off in that